Hello, and uh, this is going to be a guide for how to play Demo Man on Koth Clearcut, since it is now week three. Uh, Clearcut's going to be the next map played in officials, and I want to show newer players, you know, what you should be doing um, and how you should play this mid because. I think this is probably, if you learn this map uh, early on, you learn not only, a, it, this map is really, really good as it teaches you a lot about how to play sixes and how cough works because it's such a simple map. Um, and and the way, you know, picks and everything work on this map and, you know, how high ground is, um, it's really, really good map to know very early on, as it sets you up to be a lot better at sixes in general, um, especially for demo man. So, I was gonna start off with the rollout. There's actually two rollouts you can do on this map that are effective. So first, this is your default. Uh, not amazing, not perfect, but basically, you get your buff, you do your spawn sticky, and then you want to um, sticky to this right door over here, this right side. And you want to try to ramp slide up this ramp and then through this door to that pack. Um, if you don't hit the ramp slide, not a big deal. Just say you're slow. Uh, and just keep walking. Don't like try to do an extra sticky or anything like that. And one thing you will probably have trouble with when you're trying to learn this is putting the sticky too low um, or way too high as I was forcing you around. You want it. I would say this little notch on the door right here that I'm aiming at is probably your best bet if you just aim a little bit lower than that, just underneath it, and you'll get a sticky like that. Um, and the distance from the sticky is you don't want to you don't want to immediately come up to it and just see because you'll bang your head off the ceiling there. So you want to uh, keep this. You want to distance yourself from the sticky a little bit, not too too much, but just enough so that. You don't get the explosion force that knocks you into the ceiling of this doorway. Um, yeah, you want something more like that, but obviously you want to hit the ramp slide here. Uh, not perfect. And it's not a crazy, crazy issue if you're slow on this rollout. That's a bit better. Not not perfect, but you usually want to surf. You want to ramp slide, surf this ramp here, and uh, come around this door. And you grab this back, you start charging your sticky. Um, you can just shoot it right there. Even then, that's quite a deep, that's a little bit of a useless sticky there, but you get the idea. Um, you may not even have to charge it, really. You could just, honestly, don't even bother charging until maybe here, and then you could just shoot across at the enemy demo, or whatever. Um, what your mids are going to look like is, obviously, you know, you do your rollout. Um, let me actually show you the other rollout real quick before I go into mids. So, the other rollout, again, get your buff, your spawn sticky, and then you're just going to do one here. Do a little crouch pop up like this, and then do this sticky here. Come up here to this pack. And what you're going to be doing for this rollout is you're going to be trying to um, get this high ground immediately for your team when you do that rollout. I really haven't had much practical application for that roll up but it could it's something you know if you're gonna go for a, it's better for the play if you're going for the really quick high ground play that's a really good roll out there um if you watch banny's clear cut review he says he prefers that roll out over the other over the uh valley roll out just because of how much quickly how quickly it gives you high ground control it's just you have to be where this is called kill box for a reason it's pretty easy if you if you're slow if if you get to this door and you sl you're slow, you know you're not hitting the rollout right. Honestly, I would just walk to this pack and go valley, because if you fuck up from the spawn door into the to this door, then you're gonna you're gonna be fucked and you're not gonna have a good time, um, because you can get spammed out here by any soldiers here. And if the demo realizes, if the demo's playing over here, he can kind of see you a little bit. He he can look right here and he can just put stickies over there at you. And uh, that's not going to be very fun for you. So you just have to be aware of that when you do this kill box roll. But this works really well if you're going for a play to take the enemy high ground early. Um, but uh, your standard rollout through valley, you're going to come here. Um, like I said, you don't even have to charge your sticky that early. You can just wait till you get here. Start charging your stickies. Get maybe... Oh, you don't have to use many stickies, obviously, very early on. Maybe one or two just to do some early damage to the enemy demo. Um, and then you're going to be one looking at this right here. This is your fucking damage spot right here. Um, obviously, there is an enemy demo to be worrying about. He's going to be playing here. You're probably going to be playing here. 
Um, this is your main area to look at along with this area. This is your high ground and this is the enemy high ground. Obviously it's you know the same thing on the other, other side because it's a one to one map. Um, so, um, But yeah, you want to be shooting anybody up here constantly. This is how you do damage. Um, but you don't want to be just throwing all your stickies up there. I would only shoot maybe two or three at a time and then reload. Get, get Chip damage those players up there and then reload your stickies. Chip damage players up there, reload your stickies. That allows your flank will be right around here. Your roamer and your flank cell will be right around here. That allows them to pressure this. And if there's no enemies here, they could just jump up. Your roamer can jump up here. And your flank cell can jump up here and take this for free. And this lets you get a lot of good aggression on the combo and especially the pocket scout. Um... Because pocket scouts will be playing, yeah, your pocket, uh, enemy pocket scout will be up there along with your the pocket soldier, and then your pocket soldier, your pocket scout will be here. Um, and of course, um, you know, obviously getting control of the enemy's high ground is really important, but you want to also make sure that you're defending your high ground. So, um, if your pot, your pocket scout, and your pocket soldier needs to call to you that hey, they're aggressing our high ground or they're they're being annoying, because flank scouts will come here, come right here, and just double. All they have to do is. Double jump here. Uh, here, let me go on scouts to show you actually what I'm talking about. Scout calling here. This one came right from the administrator. So what I'm talking about is, is flank scouts would just come out Let's to a mid, em. and what they could sit and do to your pocket soldier and your pocket scout is they could just come right here and just do this. Just chip shot, chip shot, chip shot chip shot just constantly and that shit is really annoying if you're playing up on that high ground so all you have to do to prevent that is if you're demo man and you're playing right here you just lob a sticky right over here right here you probably aim right about here charge it a little bit and you get all the you get that flank stuff that's jumping around right here um and of course if there's enemies just straight up on your high ground you want them off right away you cannot let them stand up there. They will win the mid for free if you let them just sit there and spam down. Excuse me. Spam down your pocket scout and your pocket soldier and also your medic. So, uh, And then, of course, you have uh, the place on mid. So that's what you're going to be doing when you just first come out to mid. High grounds, high grounds. Uh, and, you know, of course, when you first come out, you know, your first stick or two, whatever. Um, but, yeah, just playing the high ground is how, you, is how you're going to be really good on this map as a man and really helpful for your team is just... Keeping enemies off their high ground, keeping them damaged, and keeping your high ground secure for your pocket scout and your pocket soldier. Um, so now let me switch back to Demo Man real quick, just so I can get a, give you guys a better idea of what I'm talking about with things. So, um, what you're going to be doing uh, on mid is you're going to be deciding your play. So you should have this while you're rolling out. You should be, your soldiers and you should be deciding the play right away, um, or your flank, whatever. This is a map where your flank is actually a lot more powerful than your your combo is. Usually, um, a lot of times it's just a combo, but because this is such a high ground centric map, if you and your flank are coordinating properly, or you and your soldiers are coordinating properly, you're the most powerful classes on this map because of how, how well you can make high ground. Um, there's two big default plays you can go for is you can just go for the bomb across so you bomb both your soldiers across and then you as no men with your medic and your pockets out you just come across here get the flush the combo out and you win the you basically win the cap for free multiple times um try to drop the med try to kill you know combo player try to kill the demo uh demo picks are demo picks are weird because it makes high ground a lot it makes the mids um this is the one map where a demo death uh, on one team can be good for the team that kills the their the enemy demo um, and pretty bad. But if the uh, but if both team demos are dead, it's a really kind of stalematey map, just because it's so hard to acquire um, high ground control. So obviously, like if my team if I die right, but then while I was dying, I you know I stickied and typed the demo and my pocket scout or my pocket soldier just like just shot some just shot once at the demo and the demo died as well then they have this high ground but they're nobody ever including my flank is ever going to get this high ground it's it's so hard to hold it but it's also so hard to gain any without your demos so demos are a fairly important pick because as i said this high ground is important this is how you win the mids um 
So, a little bit of a tangent there, but yeah. So, what you're going to be really doing, like I said, is your, your defaults are going to be just aggression right away. Is So, like I said, both your soldiers bomb right here. And, um, you know, not right here, but they bomb to where the combo is. And then you come up as demo with your pocket and your med. And you just flush them out. Um, and your flank scout should come up here. Uh, your pocket soldier also is instead of just bombing directly at the combo. Uh, your pocket soldier, uh, if he's playing up here or even just down here. He can do a bomb to get over onto their high ground with your flank scout. And he could just spam enemies out of valley. Um, which is really, really effective. <clears throat> so... Uh, also keep in mind the first cap on Koth does not deny your players. Uh, denying is when uh, usually you have about, I think it's like by default, it's like 10 second timer if nobody owns a point, 7 second timer if the enemy team owns a point, and then it's like 12 or 15 seconds uh, if you own the point, but the first cap will not deny any dead players. So uh, if you win the mid but you lose a player, you can keep capping. You don't have to worry about denying anybody. It's only when it's been capped once after the first cap has happened by either team then uh, you could start you you will start denying your players if you cap before they respawn. Um, <coughs> regardless, um, regardless of that, uh, your other default bomb or your other default mid uh, for aggression is going to be send a soldier behind over this wall here, which is called bats. Um, and right away, you do not want in higher divs, if you see them play clear cut and they do that play, um, it's really, really important that you notice that they always try, <clears throat> if they know their soldier's been spotted, to move quickly, which what you do, what, the way you have to do that is you have to make sure once your roamer's across, your pocket soldier has been enough HP to bomb right at the enemy combo. And your and obviously make sure your roamer is able to follow up because good teams are gonna see your roamer, you know, bomb behind and go okay. F both flank players, so both the roamer and the flank scout are gonna come back and kill your roamer. They're gonna take a two v one and just get a free pick, right? So by going really quickly after your roamer's gotten behind, you don't give the enemy team that chance to kill your roamer without. Um, either you know having to re-aggress for to combat pressure from you your team or you know just straight up you know having playing the mid and not and forgetting he's there and then your roamer can just come back in from behind and just destroy you can really shred combos doing that um however when you do that you may also have teams that instead of sending two players behind they just come forward at you and when that happens you need to tell your roamer to come back in immediately recommit right away get a health back come back in because now you're down a player they have all their players coming at you you need that extra person to come back in from behind because they're what's going to be giving you a fighting chance against that full six player aggression um <clears throat> so that's your two aggressive plays and that's how you combat them. And obviously, same goes for uh, when they when enemy teams do it to you. Uh, so now well, I'm going to go over the passive play. So for the passive play, uh, as demo again, you're going to be doing a lot of the same stuff, just shooting. It. But you want to be looking for soldiers a little bit more who are bombing. Um, most soldiers they like to do the bomb onto the bats from I want to say about here or this lower end of the high of uh, the top of bunker. So. Uh, this is obviously crate. This is uh, tower. You can just call this tower. This is shed, and then this area, this doorway here, is called saw because of this big saw blade. And then this is valley right here, just because there's high ground here and there's some. It's it's a little weird of a design. This is uh, valley, and then uh, this is obviously just rock. Um, and then these two areas right here are trench. This little grassy area on both sides, and then this is like you can just call this left side or left ramp. Um, and then obviously enemy bunker, friendly bunker, whatever, or our bunker, their bunker. Um, and then this is inside bunker, um, the same with over there, and yeah. And uh, like I said, this is called kill box, this is lower kill box, this is upper kill box. So, anyways, um, sorry for going to recall this, of course that's mid. Um, but yeah, your passive hold is going to be something like, you're just going to be looking for soldiers bombing from everywhere. Um, because you want to be looking to see are they going to go behind or are they going to go for my med or are they going to come for you as a demo and when they do the second you realize they're coming for you you need to put a sticky down and you need to start backing up 
okay because you back up and you're and they're ignoring your pocket scout up here your pocket scout doesn't receive pressure your pocket scout can easily deny this guy especially if you manage to get a stick or a pipe off on him so and and then they'll be down a player or two if they commit um more than two players it's kind of a feed play on them especially if you can recognize it early usually they'll do a double soldier in their flank scout and when that happens if they do it a lot on multiple rounds don't even i wouldn't even come past this fence really i would honestly just wait here to see what happens because you could just look at this i could just sticky all this off look at this now anybody who who's coming at me really has to like super commit to my face and when they do that you just pipe them um and your loadout's gonna be, you know, your iron bomber, sticky bomb launcher, and your katana. Obviously, there's some mounts where I recommend grenade launcher, the stock uh, over iron bomber, for various reasons. Usually, do the map link, but this is a map where, honestly, the iron bomber reaches pretty, pretty far, in my opinion. So, it reaches far enough for it to be a better choice over the grenade launcher. <clears throat> but yeah, passive holds. Uh, like I said, if they're really feeding for you, it's fine if you die on a mid if they just fed three players for you. Because now they're playing five to three, they lose that mid every time. Like, unless your team literally, like, looks the other way and, like, does nothing, they lose that mid every time. So, if, they, if they're feeding players for you, two or three players, um, just try to do damage to them and let your team, make, make it so your team is able to clean up on them. And that way, they'll just be down two players right away off the mid. And, of course, they'll try to push. But, it, like I said, if your team's pretty good, they're, they're going to know what to do. And they're going to be able to clean up a mid pretty quickly off that. Um, the other way you have to watch when passively is if this soldier goes behind here. So, if you call it prior to coming to the mid, so during your rollout, you call it to play passive. I would have your flank scout, um, if they don't already know this, to come up here. And he could double jump right here onto your bats. And what will happen then is when they try to send a soldier behind, um, he's right there, and that guy is meat shot, and he's also detected right away. He's seen because he has to basically sledgehammer his head through the fucking scout that's just standing there. So, um, so as long as you do that, uh, you have your flank scout play there, you're going to counter that, that roamer or whatever that likes to go behind, whether it's a pocket soldier or a roamer. You're going to counter that player really hard, and that way you won't even have to send two players back for him. You may only have to just send your flanks out, but again, I always recommend uh, to take the two, you know, that's a lot of coaches will say that you'll hear that all the time when you're learning from your mentors and your coaches, is take 2v1s, not 1v1s. Um, so, now, so that's the passive, uh, Your pocket, like I said, your pocket soldier and your pocket scout are going to be up there. Uh, your med will be right around here, next to you, near you, maybe here or here a little bit. Um, and then, like I said, your flank and your roam are here for aggressive. And then when you're playing passive, your flank scout's just going to be up here. Your roam will still be up here. So, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, this also your roamer, if your roamer is going to go behind, then they may come up, come up valley with you and bomb across like that. From, you know, to here, here, and there. Um, but... Usually, if, they don't, if they're not doing that, then they're going to be here. Um, the other type of mid... Uh, the other type of aggressive mid you could do... There's actually a third one, I forgot. Is instead of sending a soldier behind or double bombing your soldiers, is high ground. The high ground play. Um, the way the high ground play works is it requires you. Okay? If you're not doing it... Excuse me, I'm a little stuffed up. Um, if you're not doing it and your flank isn't doing it, then it's not going to work. So you need your flanks out and your roamer to be alive, to be well, to be somewhat healthy. Uh, and you want to load up your, you want to load up everything when when you get the call for it, or if you're doing this during the rollout, you want to save your sticks. And you want to wait till enemies come up here. You're gonna just carpet this off really hard, debt, re reload some stickies, debt, and then more, and then carpet again, and let your team go up there and say, hey, they're cleared out. You want to call when the enemies back off of that high ground, and say, hey, bomb it now, get on it now, get their high ground right now. They're going to jump right here, and then as soon as you see them here, don't bait them. Don't stand here or here and, like, look at them. If you if you haven't put the stickies up there, trap them off, and you want to walk forward here. So that way, anybody who tries to re-aggro your two players that come up here, um, they're going to get hit by stickies right away as soon as they do, which may allow your retreating uh, flank players to get cleanup kills. And then while that's happening, of course, you're right here, so you can just sit here. 
because they because as soon as the enemies see these guys here they, this dies like they, this line of vision dies to them they're all going to be looking right here so um what you could do is either you could be here and uh, the enemy demo should be looking over here if he's looking at you then you have to fight him um it, but if he's looking at you it's a little bit stupid because yeah he's you're, you're just gonna he's just gonna fucking let his team die if he's looking at you instead of the high ground so um and trading demos is really not a bad play there if you get the high ground off that um, and again, this play is not really to get huge picks. This is just to get the high ground to give your team better positioning because as a combo player, this is going to let you walk forward and take this space here because with two players up here, just spamming into this valley here, they really can't move past this. And I, I could just come up here as Nemo Man and just nuke the Jesus out of them. So, uh, yeah, that's, it's a really, really good strategy, honestly. Um, and of course you just have your roamer, uh, or you're going to have your roamer and your flank scout up here. And then your pocket scout and your pocket soldier are going to be looking to clean out this flank here, flush them out. Um, and then your pocket scout will probably play more with you. Um, your pocket soldier may turn into a bit of a roamer player. So if you want to switch it up and have your pocket soldier roll out as a roamer for that particular mid type, when you uh, want to take the high ground, that's fine. And then have your roamer come through here and go behind towards them that also is a play you could do but um you know it's it's not something i've personally tried but i have done this high ground play um this map targeting players works very well so um if you so firstly if you notice you're being targeted by somebody uh as demo man because people there are teams that will see if you're a good demo man they're going to target you okay that's the simple truth if they don't think you're a good demo man they're not going to target you uh, if they're just stupid, then they're not just not going to shoot at you. But if they're smart, they're going to shoot at you all the fucking time. Um, and because of that, you have to play what's called a little bit of bitch demo. Um, but really, you could just sit here and just snipe this high ground. Okay? Just charge your sticks. And I, I own this. I own that building. Okay? We are robbing this house. Um, <laughs> you, you own this high ground here. So, even when you have to play a little bit more passively. So you want, but you just have to understand you're gonna be taking a lot of damage, and you're you're you are a high priority target. Um, so what you want is for your team, especially your pocket scout and your pocket soldier right here, to be shooting the fuck out of this demo here, because if he's hard spammed all the time and he always he constantly has to play back here to get arrows, uh, or play over here more which it kind of works for him but he's still spam he's still really spammable um he's much easier to catch out if he's playing here at this bunker versus here because with here i can if i if a soldier bombs me and shoots a rocket i can surf away towards main not that fast obviously i could surf towards main i could surf towards valley it's not a big deal but right here if i'm like this i can't surf anywhere i'm caught in here so and that's also another note is that when you're grabbing this ammo pack here, just make sure you call it to your team. Hey, I'm going into our bunker to grab ammo um, because you're going to need ammo on this mid if you have long-winded mids, um, which is something that may happen with teams that are not smart about how to take uber exchanges. So uh, now I will go over ubers. So uh, what you're going to do on your ads, your evens, and your dishands. So um, on your uber ads... Um, you just want to use, okay? You want to use right across just everybody whole commit, a whole W play, okay? Uh, and obviously, as a combo player, you want to be called what you're shooting at. Or uh, if your pocket scout, you know, pocket scouts are often the main caller. If you want to let them call what to shoot at, that's also fine. But if you hit high damage on the target, just call it. Um, and, you know, it, and obviously, you just want to be watching out for flank scouts. This is a map where flank scouts can make huge plays by just Wing at you uh, during a... You know when you're when you're trying to do a coordinated play with your team so um but yeah when you're when you're uber ad you should just w at the enemy okay you should just hard commit for their medic kill their med so they they even so the ubers even out um if they come to fight you if they don't come to fight you and they're smart they're gonna do what's called a four man sec which i will go over how you are gonna do it and how they're gonna do it so for four man sacks there's a few things you could do um if it's an even so when you, when Ubers are even, they could either take a mid fight or go for a four man sec if they have enough time. They're usually gonna take a uh, mid fight, which would just be pretend it's like you're at the start of the round, you just rolled out type deal. Um, so with that, 
um, what you're going to be looking at is a lot of silliness, I would say. So, uh, with four line sacks, uh, bunkering is one of the bigger strategies um, when you're trying to fight it. So, you either have and you're huge ad, um, <clears throat> or you're about even and the other, other team's looking to get a high play by making it completely disad for you. So, what you're going to do as demo is you're going to be looking, you're going to come into bunker here, you're going to probably play right about here, uh, and your med's going to be right around here, uh, and you can come back, grab this ammo, whatever, just play right here, so you're not so close to your stickies, but you're close enough, you could hit pipes, you could, you don't have to charge your stickies really hard to kill anybody here, um, but you don't really want to debt, what you're going to do is you're just going to carpet this whole ceiling here with sticks, and then this wall right here with like two, Basically, anybody who walks through here is just dead as soon as you die. They they pop like a fucking balloon. I've gotten two. I've gotten triple kills even because three people just come through this doorway and walk into these without thinking about it. Um, players who are smart are going to see, obviously, they're going to come here and they're going to look and they're going to see your stickies. If it's a soldier, uh, if it, what they should do, what enemies should do if they're smart about four man sacks is send a soldier right here uh, or a demo and just clear all your sticks here and then walk hard right. Because then they won't be affected by this stick here. So, yeah, that's how you play that. Um, God, the collision on these is awful. They're literally floating. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's how they would try to counter that. And when they do that, all you have to do is as soon as you see your stickies either fall or get blown back, obviously don't dead on yourself. If they get blown, make sure they get blown past you. Um, dead, and then you just want to carpet right here. Okay, and kill anybody who's looking right here with your pipes. It's, it's really not hard to hold this as double man, um, as long as, uh, honestly, it's honestly kind of easier when multiple feed for you as versus when it's just like one or two that try to look, uh, try to peek into your door, so. And then what you should have is either, um, is you should have your pocket soldier or your roamer right here at this back door ready to stuff this hard. And you as demo man want to be, you know, listening to his calls because listening to their calls because if you don't listen to this call, you are kind of throwing this. So, um, your pocket soldier, he could get double stuff really hard, but as pocket soldier, if he's smart, he's gonna come as soon as he knows there's two players. He's gonna stand right in this doorway, okay? Because that way nobody can get through. Maybe a soldier can bomb above his head, um, but that's kind of a tricky one. That's like a, a jump from here. That's like it's really really hard to do. So he's gonna stand right here and just shoot a bunch of like 110 damage rockets right here to anybody who's here and Then that gives you the perfect opportunity that make sure this door is, is secured down and you just turn around and just shoot a sticky Pipe pipe dead those enemies are dead right away um, If anybody gets in breaks in through the back door without your pocket soldier dying You need to just sticky your medic So if your meds gonna be right about here or right about here just put stickies around your medic because that they're gonna be right on top of that guy and um, Yeah, if you just if they're on top of your med and you're just dead on them, they're gonna die so that's how you do the bunker, and then you'll have um, a flank scout spotting here. <coughs> you have a flank scout spotting up here on the enemy roof to look for the players coming out. You could also have your one of your soldiers, per, um, maybe your roamer. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously I prefer if your roamer players play together and your combo plays together. Um, you could also have both your soldiers here. So you could also have a soldier helping you with this front door or helping, uh, you know, both your soldiers just dealing with this back door and you deal with the front door. Uh, and just both your scouts are out of this. Uh, your pocket scout should play up here on top of your own shed. The only thing you have to be careful of, uh, whether your pockets uh, for your pocket scout or your um, soldier or your soldier who may be playing up here, is if the enemy demo, if the enemy team is smart, they're gonna see the players here. They're gonna go, okay, let's get them off our high ground. They're gonna come out here. And what you could do is demo. I honestly recommend is when the enemies haven't gotten there yet. Is you play right about here just play here you can spam across you can I would honestly just only use pipes right just play here shoot some pipes across okay um, and once you see them if you see them start to come forward at you um, you need to come back in here if they don't come forward you could just chill out here and hang out and try to get some early damage in <clears throat> by doing that what what you're essentially doing is you're baiting them into thinking you're not bunkering and I would honestly tell your med like don't be me for a second because players who are smart, they're going to see the beam coming out of here onto you, and they're immediately going to go, okay, they're bunkering. Um, and what you should do, and what they're going to do, and this is what you should do, too, if you're going to go for a sack and then you see an enemy team is bunkering, is the demo should immediately 
immediately. He comes, so pretend I'm on that side. He comes out valley, you know, these players are off the high ground already. And he sees the beam coming out. Okay, they're bunkering. I'm doing this. Okay, I'm carpeting this off. Because if this demo's out here, right? And he doesn't tuck himself in really quick enough. He's dead. He's, he's severed. Now his medic has to arrow him or beam him. Um, and also, anybody who, like I said, is on top of their bunker. Um, so pretend, you know, I'm bunkering. My team is bunkering. And I'm like a pocket scout. If I come here, boom, I'm dead. I'm dead right away from that sticky. So that's what you as a demo should be doing when you when you see the bunk, when you're going to fight the bunker play. And that's what an enemy demo who's good is going to be doing. Um once they have this trap down this gives them so much space to move around so what they'll do is obviously they um you know they don't have to hard hold this trap what they could do is uh you could coordinate so what you're going to want to be doing as demo man is coordinating with your other sackers which is going to be both your soldiers and your flank scout um or excuse me and your pocket scout because your pocket scout is part of the sack uh your flank scout and your med should be playing should just be chilling here and ready to as soon as as soon as you guys sack they're gonna run all the way to spawn so um, but your pocket scout and both your soldiers are gonna be with you in the sack so uh, obviously like I said you see they're bunkering you don't you don't sack immediately what you do is you get anybody off your high ground of course okay and let your players take that high ground and then you're gonna want to get anybody who's isolated you're gonna have them spotting for you and say hey who's isolating and you can kind of bait the cap a little bit i would play maybe right here um because that make that has to because if you play right here that means this demo here can't can't just shoot from in here he has to swing himself wide to see you so you could bait cap a little bit and say hey i'm gonna look for you know call out players call out isolated players um and what you want to do is you either want to bait them into just using into you to stop the cap <coughs> or you catch out isolated players and obviously like I said you have this trapped off so it's hard for them to peek you and then um, what you're gonna want to do is coordinate with your soldiers say okay boom you're gonna bomb over try not to get spotted when you do this bomb across and I honestly wouldn't go that close to be honest but um, <coughs> you could stuff this back door right here Okay, this is really really good. You can coordinate with a soldier just to stuff this back door because if you only have one soul if you kill um, If you get two picks really early on when you see their bunker play then you could really destroy you could really squeeze down on this bunker um, You want to just get this soldier out of here if you can and then um, you know Even if your soldier dies if this soldier dies you can just come in here and just do this and that pocket that that demo man and that medic are either gonna have to die kill you really fast or or be forced um so they're they're extremely lucky if they kill you really that easy if you got another bunker from behind um if you can't make that kind of play but you do want to be doing something um like i said you could just chill here and edge the cap while your team while the rest of your players do things um and make them just come out and use at you which is what you should be doing out of the bunkers so if they start edging cap, you need to use to prevent it right away. Um, it's just kind of the way it is. And if there's nothing your players outside could do, um, either they're getting isolated and, and you drop two players, or they just simply know, like they don't have the positioning to fight the pe person who's edging cap, then they you need to Uber out to save the cap right away. It's a much better play than just you know being forced in here or just dropping or whatever. So. Um, regardless, so obviously edging the cat, you could either just sit there, edge the cap, no problem, and, you know, kind of bait the demo man here. Um, or you can, you know, walk across here. I, I honestly would just sit here to cap the point. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and walk right in here, okay? Uh, or just sticky jump right away and come in. No, 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 no I'm not doing none of that. I'm going to sit here and play this crate like this. Look at this. Damage, 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 damage. Medic hurt, demo hurt. What this allows for me, what this uh, lets me do is this lets me do a lot of damage, obviously. And so that opens up a lot of space for my team uh, as, you know, so maybe my pocket scout come with me and he could, he could sit right here, edge the cap and just chip shot, chip shot, chip shot, chip shot the men in the demo, chip shot the men in the demo over and over again. Or he can stuff that back door really hard because I'm keeping the men in the demo focus looking at me. And, you know, I could send three players to just smash through this door hard. 
and then as soon as the demo turned around for them boom i'm right here done done deal so don't get that's why that's the reason i say you should play this box you kind of honestly could play close on this crate it's going to be really hard for you to get piped if you just play right here like this and you you have an easy time piping players in there and just sticking them so anyways um what else is there so there's that's how you do the but that's how you deal with the bunker and that's how you play the bunker um, so now i'm gonna go over in uh two even plays so let's say you come out to mid right you do your thing you bomb across you win the mid but you do not kill the enemy medic it's still even uh the enemy team should not be going for a four-man sack if they do that's really silly on them they should be looking to refight this mid. Now, what you should do is if you have the players, you want your, you're going to tell, if you, they're not up there by default, you want to tell them, hey, I need a scout and a soldier looking on their high ground. I want you to be looking to value and spotting. As dumb men, you just sit here, pipe, pipe, pipe. Oh, med took 100. Oh, med dropped. Demo dead. Med demo's really hurt. You're going to really, you're going to stall players extremely hard just from the point look at this there's not they can't shoot me here i can't be shot the only way i could be shot is if the demo sits here and takes pipes but tries to return them that's the only way i can take any damage otherwise i'm pretty pretty safe just standing here on point just doing this so uh and that's why you like that's why i like to have players there and then if they're really piped there you could have your soldier your the soldier up here just spam down and then your pocket scout, um, he's either going to play right here, he'll be up here maybe, um, or he can play like right around here, uh, on your high ground as well to deny bombs, um, because some teams will, they'll recognize that they, you know, they can't get through valley, and they'll smash their soldiers through, so, uh, your pocket scout can, like I said, he could play here, he could play at the far corner of your high ground, or he could just play on this crate, um, and then your roamer is going to be looking at either upper kill box or lower kill box, preferably upper kill box since he can escape. Or he can be up here on bats, um, just, you know, shooting, getting some info, not shooting at anybody. And then, um, yeah, that's how you would do an even hold if you win the mid but you don't kill the medic. Um, and you have a good chunk of your players. If you don't have a good chunk of your players and it's even... Um, there's kind of a few things you could do. Uh, you just wait for your players to get up, honestly. That's probably the best thing. And just play a little bit more passively. Be Play more like it's just a regular mid. Um, and, of course, also when you win the mids like that, um, whether you have a disad or an add, um, if you're not going to bunker and you know you're not going to bunker, you're going to be looking to uh, put some traps down. So that's a good trap there. People won't check this sometimes, but, you know, it's fairly common. Uh, this is good. This is really good right here because some teams will like to come out of main here. Um, and if you have the flank scout, if your flank scout's still alive after the mid, you say, hey, flank scout, come with me. And this is really good right here. This is pretty good. This will kill anybody who, who just waddles kill box because uh, lots of roamer soldiers, when they're pushing out, they like to just waddle kill box here and just immediately, they won't even check this. Um, smart ones will, but, you know, in lower divs, you're not going to see that. They won't even notice this. They're going to be looking here trying to get info on you and then rocket jump or... You know waddle here do the high bomb off the tower or whatever so that's a pretty good trap as well um and then any player who comes up here if you're if you have a roamer here or a scout here whatever and they're getting contested right here you need to help them um this is a really good spot because um let me show you real quick look at how much i can see i can see their high ground I can almost see into their valley, as a matter of fact. And this is me as no man. If I'm a scout, I can double jump. If I'm a soldier, I can rocket jump and see so much. Uh, I could see into I could see into the enemy saw, or you know, pretend I'm on blue, whatever. Uh, I can see my high ground. I can see their high ground. I could see where their demo could be playing. I could see all of the point, and I could see into my own bunker. Like it's really good. I can kind of see the ramp here where flank players are going to be. So any player who tries to aggress this when you're when you won the mid. Um, when they're going for the re-aggro because it's even. You want them to... You could just shoot. Look at this. I could just stand here on point and just sticky this all day. Okay? Keeping those players... Like, again, it's just another high ground to deny. 
Oh man, it's just a lot of sticky sniping. Just sit, sit on point or even back here and just deny this. Oh yeah, also that's another point I, I forgot about is if you're going for an aggro play and you see a scout or a soldier standing here, fuck this high ground, honestly, I'm going for that. If we're going to send, especially if we're going to send a soldier behind, it's not a big deal if you're, gonna, if you're not going to send a soldier behind, but I like to just get that player off that area because they have so much info when they're sitting up there. So, um, but yeah, that's what you would do with evens with you win. Um, now let's say, um, and then there's the evens when both teams are going to re-aggress. So let's say they broke past you and they're coming here. They're going to want to use and try to get your med to use right away. Um, oh, also another good spot I forgot to mention is, uh, right here. If this one's a little bit more iffy, um, but right there is a, it's, it's all right. Uh, it's not amazing. Uh, they sometimes most people won't walk in will walk into that, but that one's not great I've not had much success with that one, but you could try it This one right here though is really good. This is like a one time per match thing This look at this those stickies are fucking invisible Okay, and you're gonna have demo man. They'll come here to shoot at you and look boom right there and a lot of times when um, it's even the aggressing team who lost the mid is gonna walk right here the closest lane and if you can debt this right as right as the demo or the med walk through holy shit you went you just fucking won for free for because you put stickies on the floor in a fucking corner like it's really good crates pretty okay again this is a lightning won't strike twice one um, they'll clear that all the time after you do it once I also honestly if um, if you're expecting even play to help out your players playing on the enemy high ground a little bit, you can carpet the high ground. Uh, it's not a bad play because it's the the only way your stickies and uh, the only way your stickies are gonna clear is if their demo shooting here. If their demo is gonna go for the uber, he's not really gonna be paying attention to this as much unless he's getting spammed from it. Um, you know, your soldier and whatnot should be going for that, and that goes for of course if you're um, going to be the aggressing team. So you lost the mid, and you're coming up valley here. You need to get these players off the high ground right away. So you're players can regain that high ground for you and that's going to help you when you go to use and uh like i said like i honestly don't walk here if you on i would swing this wide and shit and you know be looking like this and you can kind of check and go okay there's six there or there's not six there tell a scout you know maybe tell your pocket scout hey clear these sticks or have your flank scout clear it whatever um you could also if you're the team that lost the mid fight um and you're aggressing you could also just bait the cap um you could have a flanks out or your pockets out, whichever one you, you need to decide that with your team. Um, bait the cap, and all you do is you literally walk here, and they're either gonna sit right here or like right here. Um, they'll either just play here on trench or play really close like this, um, or they're just gonna play here on your shed like this. So, with that, um, that's a really good way and what you want to do is just make sure nobody is really like hard shooting at them so obviously when your flank set goes for that um i'm not too obviously again high ground's good but i won't be too concerned with it i'm more concerned with the flank scout a little bit so i want to be just juggling here and here so demo man uh high ground demo man high ground okay obviously not using all your stickies like that but that's kind of how you should play that is just be looking at the high ground looking at the demo man um and you'll you'll get high dpm if you're if you're playing the high ground correctly um if you're not and you're like oh i'm shooting a combo blah you're you're not gonna fucking do anything you're, you're gonna get no damage so i really wouldn't worry about this guy just don't worry about the enemy demo man that much just worry about high ground but when you're edging capped you can help your flanks out a little bit by putting some pressure on the enemy demo um so yeah um, also you could expect when cap gets edged like this, like I said, if it's even and you're the aggress you're the team that's aggressing, you know, you lost the mid fight and you're trying to recap, um, then, you know, expect them to Uber. And if that's the case, you could just, I'm just going to carpet then. If I, if I see the med and the scout come out like around either here or this or that fence there, I'm just going to do this. Okay, uh, well, walk across, idiots. You have to use really early. You usually don't want to let a team Uber on the point. You want them to be Ubering before they, like, probably at the bottom of this ramp. Um, and even then, by carpeting like this, you have the chance to juggle the med real high. 
which can be huge because now that leaves that burns a lot of the uber time especially the med gets like super launched up really far um that burns a lot of the uber time that leaves all these players here completely vulnerable no heals and no uber um, when they think they have it, it's really, really, really effective if you can juggle the med. That's that's why I would say Ubers are not just completely like once they happen, you should just instantly be retreating. If you can juggle the med there, even if you die, it's like not it's not amazing if you die. OK, it's not totally worth dying, but it really helps if you can juggle the med. That's why I say carpeting when you know they're going to Uber is really solid. OK. Um. What else is there? So uh, when you're the even, when you've won the mid and you're the even team, um, and you know this Uber's coming, you wait for them to Uber. Okay, let them Uber first, so that way your Uber finishes after theirs, so you still have invincible players while their Uber's already finished with. Um, you have to get it through if you're t if you're. Uh, so the thing with Ubers on this map is that players, um, the the Uber is just whoever's in it. So. Um, if I'm not there to be in the uber because I died or whatever as a man like I have to say I'm out I can't come up here and see the ubers already gone off my team's already cross point and try to jump in. No, 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 that's how I get killed That's how a soldier comes and finds me if I come valley and my team's already ubered I'm just gonna play here at soft. Okay, I'm gonna get make sure this sold there because soldiers like too often They'll see the uber go off and they'll immediately try to get on the enemy high ground. I'm going to make sure this guy doesn't get off high ground. I'm going to back up my flank players a little bit. Make sure nobody aggresses them. That sort of thing. And I'll, Or I could just call my flank over and say, hey, come help me with help, help me with our high ground. Um, you could also, if both demos are out of the uber, you could coordinate with your flank. You could sit, sit way back here and shoot at the enemy demo and tell your flank, hey, bomb him now. He took 60. And what that'll do is that forces the enemies to either drop their demo or to flash him when he wasn't in the uber to begin with, which is really bad for them. Um, but you should also expect as a demo man for them to do that. That's why I say playing right here is good. But you'll see a lot of demos when they're not in the uber, they'll be playing like right here and right here, These both both these lanes, um, which is stupid on them. Uh, your flank should not be aggressing this high ground unless your uber is like infinitely better. Um, and what so that's when you're out of the uber when you're in the uber um, you're just honestly reloading your six um, And I like to I like to try to carpet right here to lock out anybody even if the med is still flash Shoot three to four stickies and see if you can juggle them up in the air um, as they're trying to leave um, If you're that's if your uber is better if your uber is worse You want to be backing up. You don't have to sticky jump away um, but you have to use the uber to get ready to back up so you can create a little bit of space um, Honestly though the best thing you do um, when you uber is Fuck the uber players if the ubers are like they pop almost at the same time fuck these uber players I'm looking for idiots who are who are not in the uber And I'm looking for them and I'm killing them with my I'm coordinating with either my combo or with my flank to kill those guys Because they're gonna just be jumping around this high ground. They're gonna be hiding here in trench and shit like that like if you can if you can just keep them off your just keep them out of it now they're gonna now you're gonna even out the ubers with nobody having uber but you're gonna be up your whole team or maybe like five players and they're gonna be down two to three players no uber like they can't do anything they can't even sack which just burns so much fucking time for them so yeah it's it's really really good um understand too when you have the cap your respawn time is longer so uh, your death as dumb man is very critical and very important to not happen when you have the point. But when you don't have the point, it's not quite as important. Obviously, you're still pretty important because you're the dumb man. But it's not quite as important, especially if your team has basically won by the time you die. Um, but yeah. So um, also, too, when you're not in those Ubers, uh, instead of having three, instead of having four idiots that are not in the Uber... Um, you should tell your pocket soldier, hey, I'm, you know, hey, pocket soldier, you know, whatever the name is. I'm not going to be in this Uber. Get in the Uber. Um, and obviously let your med confirm that call because sometimes your med may, may be able to see a reason as to why he should not be in the Uber. Um, and that's fine. But your pocket soldier, if you're not in the Uber, he should be replacing you because having an explosive in the Uber is really, really good, you know, no matter what. So, 
and uh, of course you want to be using to prevent the cap so if they start edging you could use at them right away um or you could you know contest you could have your scout contest it or you can just simply shoot at whoever's um edging it and just do that but don't let yourself get caught out and baited by that okay play with your team play close with your med make sure your meds up your ass or you're you know you're putting your ass in front of your med and um yeah just don't let yourself fucking die before the uber goes off um if you're if your med drops you on the uber that is on your med um you shouldn't really need to be called for a flash um, but I've seen a lot of pocket scouts that love to look and even flank scouts. So they'll put their flank scout up here and then the pocket scout here who's in the Uber. They'll be looking to see when, um, m you know, um, the med might break beam on me, break the Uber beam on me and try to kill me. So, and you, you know, you never know when scouts are just going to fucking meat shot you or double meat shot you. And that's it. You can't do anything. So just be aware of that. Um, also another thing to be aware of is just in general in playing this map, um, is flank scouts who just fucking super ultra commit for you. Um, it seems to be something a lot of flank scouts love to do on this map, is just hard Wing the demo man, even if they die for it. Um, because again, that gives their team a lot of opportunity to just grab, get high ground for free, because their demo man can't protect their high ground and their demo man can't take enemy high ground. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting how it works. Um, so, so I went over Ubers, I went over how you mid-fight, um, so one even play is, okay, let's say, you know, okay, we did, we did the Uber exchange for, to save the cap, right, the enemy team backed off, but their med didn't die, so now both meds have no Uber, um, both teams are pretty closely even on players, um, a good play you could do is demo, and you don't have to do this, um, and if your med's cool with it, this is a great idea, is you, so you want, um, you know, once, when the team, uh, leaves, the enemy team, you want maybe a scout and a soldier there on their high ground, and a scout and a soldier here on your high ground, your pocket scout and your pocket soldier here, and your flank there, and then you're gonna be just chilling here, just ah! doing this, you're gonna be using your katana to build, um, because you'll, you could just build uber, and you're keeping your two most important players alive, and those demo men, um, either I could just stick this floor in front of me or what I can do um, Now it's a little bit risky because you could dead on yourself So you just have to be careful is I could just do this shit Where I make it so I'm standing in front of these stickies here and I'm baiting uh, what what this is called is baiting saw so uh, Me and the med are just sitting here building ex you know trying to bait them into, into seeing oh they, they didn't do a bunker play Let's sack and you know kill them um, and this is also a good play when you have uh, you don't have uber you only want to be doing bunker when you do have uber so but you want to be doing this when you have add um but it's either like not major add like only like 20 or you know 10 20 30 um and you don't have uber yet to do the bunker play this is what you could do because you know obviously they'll come up they'll see these guys think okay they're just you know doing their forward hold position whatever then they see these guys here and they think okay they're doing some like really fucking weird shit and then if they see you here this is like oh okay oh this is free they're not bunkering they don't have uber let's just super bomb them right or i can play maybe more like right here i, I want to be in a good spot to be able to just get back up so maybe i like to play right here and have my med play right here and i just sit here um you know i don't shoot stickies I could if I want to a little bit. If they're not really bombing, I could maybe start shooting stickies, but I would just wait and chill. Just hold your pipe, at, hold your iron bomber out, and just wait for anything. And, you know, obviously build with your katana. And then as soon as soldiers come in, I'm going to, you know, back up and try to go for air pipes. Back up, let them come into those stickies right there. Boom, they dead. And that that gives you one to two picks for free. You maintain your uber. Um, it's, it's really solid. What you want, too, is, is uh, you want your flank players as soon as... They're off this high ground here as soon as they get forced off this. You want um, probably your flank scout to be up here on bats again or just playing this crate here because if a soldier gets in up here, you know, from jumping here or walking kill box, that's really, really bad um, because now you can get pincered really hard. And that's the way you fight that is if you see the enemy demos doing that shit, um, you want to just be, you want you want your soldiers to be able to pincer them into the saw. See, I'm just looking at my phone. Um, 
But yeah, what you want your soldiers to be doing is you send you send one here and then you send one behind at the same time um, to try to pincer them into that saw. And while that's happening, you as a dumb man could be walking forward your combo. But again, you should only be doing this if it's even and no teams have ubers. Um, alternatively, also instead of baiting saw, playing the saw bait, um, you could just fucking do this. You could just play it like a mid fight. So pretend you came out and you know I'm shooting high ground. You know, I'm looking at the enemy demo. Oh, he's shooting at me. Well, I'm going to return fire. High ground, high ground, high. I love, dude, it's so much damage you can get here. Just shooting these, shooting idiots here because they're going to be trying to bomb off the... They're going to go soldier, right? All right, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. They're going to come up on soldier. They're not going to get a 400 buff, okay. <laughs> they're going to come up on soldier and do all sorts of stupid shit. 24-7, round-the-clock bullshit, okay? And be doing a lot of, you know, oh, like, uh, fucking, uh, I'm so good at the game. I'm going to do this crazy schizo, you know, bomb across and, you know, do this shit. And if you're just shooting stickies up here all the time, they're, they're dead. They'll be bombing and they'll, they'll land on your side with like 10 HP. And like your scout can sneeze on them and fucking kill them. They'll be doing this shit. Like I said, they'll be going for the bat. I, I don't even know how you do the bats one. I think it's like... You walk here, and then you go... Yeah, you do that. Okay. Um, that's how, you know, they'll be doing that kind of shit. They'll just be trying to work off of their own high ground sometimes. A lot of really, really... A lot of soldiers love to just work off their own high ground. And so by just keeping them damaged all the time, they cannot fucking bomb. Um, but of course, obviously soldiers that are smart, they're not just going to be having both the soldiers working their own high ground. Um, like I said, your roamer could play here because if your pocket, if, if he sees a good position or the scout gets good info or use a demo map pressure these players, he can come right here and do this. Or he can, um, he can do something like this where he, he plays down here and does this. And look at this. He's, this is right on top of the enemies there. That's a really good high bomb. So... He could do a lot of that kind of thing. Um, that's why I, I think roamers are much better if they're playing here. I teams that run both their soldiers on high ground on their own high ground a lot. It's really vulnerable because that's leaving your flank scout. That's that's leaving their own flank scout out to dry over here uh, on the ramp. Because it's dumb man. If I see that, obviously I'm just shooting. But I'm gonna tell my pocket scout, hey, or my pocket scout, hey, shoot, shoot the idiot on the ramp. You know he's gonna be an easy kill. Um, because so. then because then what that does is that makes these people need arrows this person need arrows and then and then also once that happens once all these positions have been wiped out by you from sticky spot specific sticky spamming all these players and making sure 